Sold out. Scott Field, Starkville, Mississippi. Ham Green has the ball teed at the 35-yard line. The crazies are ready in the stands. Those who have painted their bodies and their faces. And you look at Tony James, the SEC's all-time leader in kick return yards. He is joined by Kenny Roberts. Headgears of the air. State has won the toss, elected to receive. Green has us underway. Short kick. Fair catch is called for and is made at the 23. So here are our Energizers starting lineups for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Tonight they open with Greg Plump. And of course, you know Sleepy Robinson, the all-everything here. They lost him earlier. Plump is the man who carries the banner for them. The wide receivers, Willie Harris is the go-to guy out of Moss Point, Mississippi. Pros think he's one of the best. And up front, John James is their leader, a senior from Atlanta. He also has done a lot of talking this week, and we'll see if that turns into something. Got a couple of really tough guys to block up there. They're going to throw on first down. Zings it over the middle. Incomplete as it's thrown behind Olanda Truitt. Had him open. And let's meet the starters on defense for the Alabama Crimson Tide. We'll have to, to mark them both, Copeland and Curry. The Surgeon General probably should make them wear a warning that says, I can be hazardous to your health. The linebackers, awfully good. Derek Oden, probably the guy instrumental most in making this the number one defense in the country. And George Teague, normally a corner. Very versatile. We'll see him at free safety tonight, number 13. Shovel pass. Breaks it across the 35 for the first down to the 35 and a half yard line. It is Shade who takes his feet out from under it. Mississippi State is going to attack Alabama with some plays like this. The little shovel draw to Michael Davis. Sam Shade, number 31, makes the play, but trying to take advantage of the, the aggressiveness of the Alabama defensive front. Weather conditions extremely nice here in Starkville. Our game time temperature 47 degrees, a low of 30 tonight. The wind 12 miles an hour from the southwest, no chance of rain. Option play to the open side of the field, and the pitch man going to be knocked down immediately as Tommy Johnson will come up to make the play. Roberts just had no place to run. Ron, I said in the open, this may be the best defensive football team I've ever seen. They run to the football, they control the line of scrimmage, they get great speed, but they play unselfishly for Gene Stallings. You're going to see 11 helmets after the football. They're very aggressive on pursuit. Melvin Hayes has just come into the lineup. As you take a look at number 80, Eric Curry, senior out of Thomasville, Georgia. Hayes, who checks in the tight end, 6'6", 330 pounds, sophomore from New Orleans. They reverse a counter on the option hit and caught at the line of scrimmage, John Copeland. It's almost a battle as to who we call first, Curry or Copeland up front. Well, that's what I'm talking about when you look at John Copeland. It looks like you have a play against Alabama. John Copeland just beats the block inside of Jesse James and then redirects his speed and then makes the play on Greg Plump. Clanton checks into the ball game at tight end as he will... He is a senior out of Manhattan, Kansas, and Hayes will come to the sideline. More of a play-action pass receiver, so when Clanton's in the game, you might expect him to throw a little bit more. Third down and 10. Pass, well overthrown. Truitt is the man that he wanted, and for the first time tonight, we will see Mr. Palmer on a kick return situation for Alabama. And Mike, he may be as electrifying as anybody in the country. I would not kick to David Palmer. If I'm Mississippi State, David Palmer does not get the football. I kick it toward the corner. You can see how they spread out here on coverage. Mississippi State has two wide people. Problem is Alabama has four people on those two. Now they're bringing two in. I should kick it away from Palmer. Todd Jordan, one of the best kickers in the country. He leads the Southeastern Conference, and they come after him. Palmer will receive it and is hit immediately at the 32-yard line. 35 yards on the kick and a good look at the coverage by Mississippi State. And let's meet the starters on offense for the Alabama Crimson Tide. Jay Barker out of Trustville, Alabama will open at quarterback. And at the wide receivers, they don't go deep a lot, but again, David Palmer, they will try to get his hands on the football. Up front, a workman-like offensive line led by Toby Shields at center, a junior from Fairhope. Very smart and very quick at that position. 
There's Palmer on the very first play. They get him the football. Has five, has ten, has 15, and breaks it all the way out to the 50-yard line. Ron, you're looking at one of the most, if not the most exciting player in my eyes in college football. David Palmer, number two, bringing back in motion. Count the number of ways they get the football to this young man tonight. Look at the good blocking, good blocking up front by the offensive line. Kelvin Knight makes the tackle, number five. And it was Prince Wimbledon. Against the defense. First down. Gentry. Our referee tonight, and we are getting a personal foul call or unsportsmanlike conduct against Mississippi State. Tag on 15 to the run of 18. As I was about to say, you could see 32 Prince Wimbley, the flanker downfield blocking on the play for Palmer. Lashley will go for maybe one yard. It will be knocked down by Daniel Boyd. And now let's meet the starters on defense for the Bulldogs of Mississippi State. Probably the most improved of that down three, Arlie Gibson. And he'll have to be good tonight against the Bama Rush. Daniel Boyd, who made the stop just now, the leader of that defensive linebacker unit. And in the secondary, the free safety, Kelvin Knight, a junior from Natchez, tied for the league lead in interceptions. Little stutter step, and he'll go inside the 30 to the 29, and again, inside linebacker Daniel Boyd. Talk about David Palmer again. You see Mal Moore, the offensive coordinator. David Palmer played quarterback against Colorado in the bowl game and against Auburn in the last game of the season. Wouldn't be surprised if he's playing tonight or somewhere along the season at quarterback. He's such a great athlete. Just can't say enough about David Palmer. for the first down and it's Curtis Brown just beyond the first down marker needed five he ran a six yard pattern Ron and when I look at the strategy of, of Alabama in this first series it's a lot of one back now you see they get one on one coverage with Curtis Brown number 85 on the outside but what Alabama is trying to do is spread out the defense of Mississippi State and play make them spread the field Runs into his own man and then gets hit by Mark Woodard, senior out of Kosciuszko, Mississippi. When you talk about Mississippi State's defense, you talk the front seven of this defense, they'll play with anybody. They're strong, they're tough, and if you try to run the ball inside against them, it's very difficult. That's why you have to spread the field a little bit and try to make them spread that seventh guy out, Woodard, Mark Woodard, number 45, and play with six in the box. Well, you can see, Mike, they've only given up two touchdowns at home this year. In fact, only a total of 22 points by the Mississippi State defense. with the pitch. Turns the corner. Knocked down just inside the 20. And again, Bama will be looking at a third down and about five situation. Juan Long defensively. Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator of Mississippi State, takes a chance here because look at this matchup right here. That's David Palmer one-on-one -on, -one on the outside because they brought all seven people inside and then committed an eighth player to stop the run of Derek Lassig. Look for Alabama to check out and start checking make the check to try to get the ball to David Palmer in that one-on-one. -on -one. Third down in the line to make is the 18-yard line. Joey Harville, number 60, with the noise factor here tonight. Right tackle, number 60, moves just forward enough for the penalty. Mike Gentry making the call, and it's third down Bama. Shovel pass to Lassett. He's got a lot of running room. At the 15, at the 10, 5, touchdown, Bama.
Good call by Mal Moore. Gary Glassick on the shovel draw. Mississippi State get caught in a little bit of a blitz. Proctor to attempt the extra point. Knocks it home. And let's take a timeout. And one more look at the shovel pass. Here it is to Lassick. And he will break it right up the middle of the field. And with the blitz having come, nobody home. It's 7 0. Alabama goes on top. Let's take a break. Now, well, Derek Lassick has to be very pleased with what had happened. In fact, that offensive unit, I'm sure, didn't want to go back and talk to their head coach if they came away with less than a score, at least uh, a field goal, probably a touchdown, after the illegal procedure had cost them and a third down and ten. What a play call. Cam Green to kick it off. On the 21-yard line will be Randy Brown. And let's go back, Mike, and one more look. Juan Long, the linebacker, is going to do a slow blitz. Here's Derek Classic that's going to get the ball on the shovel draw. Juan Long with just a slow blitz. Pick it up. Now there's nobody home. Good blocking downfield by Alabama. David Palmer with a key block. Derek Classic in the end zone for the touchdown. Rodney Hudson has come in at quarterback for Mississippi State. He is a freshman out of LaGrange High School. Counter with the action, Kenny Roberts. Good heavens, no place to go. Lemansky Hall, the outside linebacker on the right, comes up and knocks him down. This move by Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator, to bring in Rodney Hudson, the freshman quarterback. Rodney Hudson has a lot of confidence in himself. He brings a little bit more speed into the ball game at the quarterback position for the option but also is very confident in throwing the play-action passes, but you don't want to be second and 14. Yeah, when you play second and long uh, against this defense, you're, you're really asking for some, uh, some headaches. Lemansky Hall, by the way, you talk about speed. He's a converted strong safety, now playing in linebacker. Shovel pass, hit, knocked down, and this is going to be a loss of five more yards by Mississippi State as Davis is hit by Copeland and then a host of his friends, and it's going to be third and extremely long. I watched Alabama practice on Monday at Tuscaloosa. I've never seen a better defensive football team than this Alabama defensive football team. That's 27 years of coaching. Uh, they're just so quick, so strong, and they, they they play together so well. I'm just so impressed with this football team on defense. You see Lemansky Hall, number 11, asking for the crowd to get in it. 6'1", 220, his size. Wants to throw. And now Hudson running for his life. Throws it, it is intercepted by Teague. And he will be tackled inside the 25-yard line. That's what they do to you defensively, Ron. They just keep putting you in the hole, and then they let you make your mistakes. Rodney Hudson, the freshman quarterback, makes a big mistake on this interception. George Teague threw it right to George Teague. Now, Watson Brown will settle him down. It's still early in this ballgame. And they catch a break. Offsides on defense, a football team. So, I'll tell you one thing. I bet they don't throw the ball on this third down. <laughs> Jackie Sherrill's going to tell Watson Brown, run the football this play as punt it. So the offside penalty is uh, obviously accepted by Mississippi State. And the ball will come back to the 28-yard line. It will be a third down, and the line to make is out at the Mississippi State 42. 7 or nothing if you just joined us. Alabama on top. 8.02 to play opening quarter. What a break, Ron. I'd be surprised they do anything other than run the football here. Thanks it to Michael Davis. Wants to put it on his hip. Does. Now drills the football and incomplete. Now, he was beyond the line of scrimmage there. Now the flag has been thrown. That will be an illegal forward pass against Mississippi State. You can't get impatient against this Alabama defense. They just—they're going to make 
a lot of good plays against you, and you're going to have a lot of plays blow up in your face, but you have to run the football at the point. Illegal pass against the offense. The fourth down, it's a loss of down. Now we'll watch both the, uh, these outside players, the uh, headhunters on the punt team, but you notice how Alabama, when they kicked off the Mississippi State, the little pooch kick, both teams have respect for each other in this kicking game. Because of the rush last time, Jordan just, it, it was all he could do to get it away. But he did kick it to Palmer. Let's see if this time, if he gets time, if he will kick to him. Right? They have blocked it on the ground and touchdown Alabama. And Tony Langham. They did a nice job of disguising their punt defensive formation they lined up with four people on the outside brought two headhunters in late <laughs> Antonio Langham not only blocked it then scored the touchdown so we take one more look. That's Langham coming from the outside, or in the middle, actually. There he is, blocks it, picks it up, and 14 to nothing tied. We are back in Starkville, Mississippi, and maybe a better way to put it, a stunned Starkville, Mississippi, as the Alabama Crimson Tide have come out very quickly and scored a second touchdown. That young man right there with his second career block, punt, or kick for a touchdown. He blocked it, and then he picked it up. And Mike, in looking at the way they came after it, Sam Shade came from almost the identical position on the last punt, and he almost got it. They so they close. had seen something. They were close, and when they messed up the count of the Mississippi State punt team. We'll show it here in a, in a second, how they confused the count of the upfront people on the punting team. We'll see if they, we have another pooch punt or pooch kickoff here to keep the return people from Mississippi State at bay. Tony James, number 25. And again, he's going to push it. And it will come down to the 16-yard line again. It's Randy Brown. And Brown will take it out across the 30-yard line. Here's the, dis here's the disguise. Alabama will line up with four people on the outside. But real late, they come back inside. So they mess up the count of the personal protector. They're really confusing. See how they jump in there late? Now, it doesn't look like they make any adjustment to the count, and that opens up Antonio Langham for the punt block. Number 10, Greg Plump comes back in at quarterback, the junior from Hattiesburg. Option play to the near side. Turns it up, has five, and then is going to be picked up and driven to the turf at the 40-yard line. George Teague makes the defensive stop, and let's go to Tim Brando. All right, Ron, the Stanford Cardinal looking for a blockbuster bull bid, taking on Washington State. Steve Stenstrom will find Glenn Milburn. 41 yards, they've gone to the half. It's 10-3 for Bill Walsh's club. Well, that league continues to be more than interesting to watch. Arizona gets knocked off today after their big upset wins. Big opening in the middle for Davis. Will take it across midfield and is down in Alabama territory for the first time tonight at the 43 yard line. That's a gain of 16. You have to establish the fullback in the running game. Michael Davis, number 37, on the trap block, missed tackle up inside, allows him into the secondary. Sam Shade makes the tackle number 31. But, Ron, if they can establish the fullback, it'll really help them in their attempt to beat. Alabama. As the Mississippi State coach has said, he has to play well. Again, and breaking the tackle, but this time, number two, it is Prince. William Prince carrying the football down inside the 35 to the 33. Here, here's my point. If you can establish the run game, then you have a chance against Alabama through the play action passes and then some gimmick plays that you build in, but you have to establish the run first. 
can't establish your passing game without the run game against this Alabama defense. Wishbone set for Mississippi State. And he goes straight ahead with Michael Davis. Davis will take it to the 27-yard line. Antonio London on the stop, the senior from Tullahoma, number 55. They're doing a good job in the defensive front, blocking James Gregory, John Copeland, and Eric Curry, and that's what you have to do against Alabama. Those three people you have to get helmets on. 14 to nothing, Alabama on top. Five minutes, 35 seconds, left opening quarter. Davis caught for the ankles this time by Michael Rogers. And he will be stopped. But on this series, once they broke the play over the 50-yard line, the last three running plays have gone for positive yardage, which he hadn't been doing. The key is that they're double-teaming James Gregory, number 98, with the center and guard. And they're able to get movement against James Gregory, which opened up, it's opening up the hole for Mississippi State and the fullback. On the first down play, again, they get the ball to the big fullback. Lemansky Hall will step up first to make the contact, and you could hear the contact from up here. One more point, Ron. I don't think you can continually run it. I say you have to establish the run, but you've got to be able to mix in the play-action pass when they think you are going to run the football. That's your chance of a big play. Kendall Watkins, a redshirt freshman out of Jackson, Mississippi, 6'2", 248, just checks into the game. Number 98, James Gregory. He is a junior from St. Louis, the middle guard for the Crimson Tide. the option, Lemansky Hall, along with John Copeland, combining in the stop. You have to run misdirection plays because you have to try to slow down the speed. But they're so quick on defense. John Copeland, both misdirection plays that Mississippi State has run against them. John Copeland has been the player to stop it. Third down. And Mississippi State needs the Alabama 12-yard line. Look for Orlando Truitt on this play. James is out. Truitt is in. To the top of your screen, number 80. Play action, not going anywhere. Lemansky Hall on the blitz. Also, you could see 55, Antonio London, as the two outside backers came hunting. You have to stay out of third and long against these guys because they're so quick and you don't want them to draw a bead. Lemansky Hall, number 11, is going to come from the backside unblocked. Greg Plump never got a chance. Antonio London, number 55, also in on the play. Loss of seven on the play. Players shake it up, and I believe, yep, that is, that's uh, 94. Copeland, who is shaken up. John signed originally with Alabama, didn't make the grades, and then went to, uh, went to Hines Junior College in Mississippi, came back to Alabama. Hines Junior College down in Jackson. He is out of Lynette, and he has uh, started every game since uh, coming to Alabama. You can figure out what he did here. Right? Ankle. Twisted his ankle, but he looks like he's walking. Good shape off to the sideline. Chris Gardner to attempt the field goal. This will be an attempt of 42 yards. Plenty of length. And he is no good. Off to the right. So with 3.17 left of this opening quarter, Alabama holds. They lead 14 to nothing. Welcome back to Starkville, Mississippi. The Crimson Tide, number two ranked in the latest poll this past week, on top 14 to nothing in this opening quarter. And it's Lassick, who will be hit at the line of scrimmage. One long defensively, but he'll pick up a couple. Jay Barker, the, the quarterback for Alabama, is 13-0 as a starter. Very consistent player. Al Moore says he's a competitor and a winner. Flag 
touchdowns, five interceptions for him, and now he wants a timeout. Two thirty-nine left of the opening quarter, and we'll take a break. We'll be back to Starko right after this. Time is back in. It is second down. The Crimson Tide. They need the 35-yard line. David Palmer. And a host of people. And Mike, he's like a water bug. He gets behind those blockers, and it's hard to find him. Well, when he runs motion like that, David Palmer, when they bring him back in motion, what really worries you on the other side of the field, Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator, is the reverse. Or David Palmer throwing a pass. He gets so conscious of stopping him that he'll reverse the football. There'll be no one back home, or he'll throw the football off of that, uh, that little motion. On third down, short drop, pass over the middle is complete for the first down, and that's Prince Wembley. Out to the 48-yard line and the quick hitter. They got the single coverage, and they also got 17 yards. Well, Jay Barker made a good move here. He made a good decision. He brought David Palmer back in the block. Lassie's going to block here. David Palmer's going to block here. And they have one-on-one -on, -one on the outside with Prince Wembley. Now they pick up the whole blitz that uh, Mississippi State brought and just a good completion of Prince Wembley. Lassie's back up into the middle, takes it across midfield. And down to the Mississippi State 48. Jerome Brown, the senior out of Westbury, New York, is there to make the stop. You just watch Jay Barker just get better and better in the offense and make better decisions each week. That decision there where he checked off to Prince Lindley on the short post. He's in complete control of this offense, and he's only a sophomore. About to go under one minute in this opening quarter. play action. Throws it complete to Lashik. He will cut it back into the middle. And all of that, and I think they picked up the first down. Juan Long finally made the stop. It was Latif Travis who kept trying to corner him. Well, he was trying to get his hands up to block the pass rather than try to make the tackle on Jay Barker. Jay Barker was just able to keep getting away just long enough to get the pass off to Derek Lassick in the first down. Didn't look pretty, but he got the job done. Well, as, as a coach from another Southeastern Conference team told me, he said, he's not going to make you forget Namath and a couple of other good ones they've had down there, Staber, but, but he just gets it done. This is Anderson, who's coming to ball him a tailback. He'll have five, and now ten yards in the play. He will step out at the first down marker, and just like that, Chris Anderson, the junior from Huntsville, comes in and picks up another Crimson Tide first down. Ron, you're talking about all the great quarterbacks at Alabama, and he's not going to make you forget Joe Namath and, of course, Kenny Staber, but he's 13-0 and 0 as a starter. Now, that may make them not forget him, but they'll just put him in the back of their mind for a while. I, I think this is a team with a mission, and you remember the last time we saw them get beat? That's the last time that they lost was down at Florida, and I think since that night, they have been on a mission. Anderson again. This time to the left side as he'll take it to the 25-yard line. And that is the end of the opening quarter. So let's take a break. Here at Starkville at the end of 15. Alabama, 14 to nothing. 14 to nothing, the Crimson Tide, and they're threatening again. Second down and five. Lassen. And in, and he'll get back to the line of scrimmage. In fact, he'll pick up one. Mark Woodard is there to make the stop, and Juan Long also helping out. Mark Woodard is a key player on this Mississippi State defense because when Alabama tries to spread Mississippi State out, they're really trying to stretch number 45, Mark Woodard. They're either trying to make him a run player or make him a pass defender by alignment. He is already in grad school, the NBA program here at Mississippi State and also is documented as being faster than any defensive back that the Bulldogs had. Palmer on the reverse. 
going to be hemmed in and will fight his way back to the line of scrimmage again. It's Mark Woodard trying to pick on him, and it didn't work again. I tell you, Ron, they're setting up the reverse because they keep bringing him back in motion, David Palmer. But Mark Woodard is so conscious of David Palmer. You see three defensive players led by Mark Woodard and Charlie Davidson, number 24, make that stop. But you can just count the plays until you get a reverse here before long. Proctor to attempt this field goal as Alabama does not have enough players on the field. They have just gotten enough on. This will be a 42-yard attempt. distance and he's good Proctor knocks this one home from 42 yards and with 13 minutes and 30 seconds left until halftime our new score Alabama 17 and Mississippi State nothing I'll be sure to be with Mike Adrian and me next week for one of the best rivalry games in the country. Number 19, Southern California travels to Pasadena with their all-purpose threat, Curtis Conway, to take on the UCLA Bruins from the Rose Bowl. It's always a heated Pac-10 rivalry, and we'll be there next week right here on ESPN. The Rose Bowl. By the way, on that drive, Jay Barker was 4 of 4, 54 yards, and a touchdown. I should say for the night. They have good mix in their offense right now. Mal Moore play calling with the running game, the motion, spreading out Mississippi State. Doing a good job. And as you see the upsets today, Iowa State with a big upset over Nebraska. That, that's not big. That's the biggest upset of the year. I, that was just really hard to fathom. Rice. By the way, uh, Trevor Cobb with 128 yards in that game today. That youngster having just what everybody thought, a sensational senior year. He was really unnoticed, but very good. Brown with the return again, and he'll take it back to the 40-yard line. Randy is a redshirt freshman out of La Plaza, Louisiana. And let's take a look at the stats of the first half. Mike, all of the yardage for Mississippi State came on that last drive where they wound up with the loss and missed the field goal. And let's go down to Adrian Kirsten. Well, you know, Ron, a lot of people talk about how fantastic Bama's defense is, you know. The thing about them really is their speed. And I was talking to uh, one of the coaches here, and they said they've never seen so much speed. The way these guys come across the ball, they, you know, beyond the technique and everything, they just love hitting people. Pitch, and now the long throw downfield and one out of bounds. Orlando Truitt on the trick play. They chased him to the sideline. You have so many trick plays that you go into a ball game with, and you'd like to, as Greg Plump is going to come down to the line of scrimmage, he's going to pitch the ball back to number 80, Orlando Truitt. Wide receiver in the backfield, and he's going to throw the halfback pass, but it did not fool Alabama on defense. and still is caught by Troy. Tipton, he'll have the first down at the 38-yard line. Best Gain receiver, of 21. Ron, the best receiver I ever recruited was Orlando Truitt. He came to Pittsburgh with us, but just what great concentration and great hands that he makes this catch. Great pump, throwing the football. It's deflected at the line of scrimmage. Three-step drop. The ball's deflected. But watch him just reach down and grab that football. Concentration. Pressure and straight ahead with Davis. You could see the collision as the ball is loose and Alabama has recovered. George Teague with the recovery. The two defensive ends are the pinch anyway from the outside and that ball just came flying loose. Copeland is the man who caused it. They make so many things happen on defense. You can't afford turnovers against this Alabama defense, but they're impressive to say the least. John Copeland. Watch the inside slant, watching it up the field. Eric Curry also up the field. Ball pops out. George Teague, 13, wisely just falls on the football for the Alabama recovery. Wow, are they impressive on defense. You can really see a lot of bodies flying. 
Palmer on the reverse. Gets a block from his quarterback, but Woodard trying to chase him down, and he will. Mark Woodard with an outstanding defensive play. Just a matter of time till the reverse was run by Alabama. David Palmer stopped. Here's the pitch to Chris Anderson. David Palmer on the reverse, but again, Mark Woodard, number 45, is the one player from Mississippi State, stayed home and made the play. Alabama in that opening quarter, 106 yards, 52 rushing, 54 passing, and Mississippi State with 44 yards, and it all came in at one drive right at the end of the quarter. Palmer's going to throw it back to his quarterback, and Barker drops it. Probably a good thing, because look who was there. 45 Mark Woodard. Mark Woodard to just stand right at home, just like he's taught by Jackie Sherrill and Bill Clay, the defensive coordinator. But I like what Alabama's doing. They're trying to stretch the field. They've got some plays in here where they're making you defend the width of the football field. And they're making you defend number two, the deuce. Jared Lynch, number 45, a sophomore out of Town Creek, Alabama, comes in to the lineup. He's a sophomore. He was a tailback. Injured knee as a freshman, now as a fullback. This is Anderson. At the 40-yard line, out to the 42. Ball is loose, and Mississippi State has recovered. Kelvin Knight. Edward Williams is the man who knocked it loose. Ron, now here's where I think if you're Mississippi State watching Brown. Now here's a good time for your trick play or some type of pass play. Chris Anderson, number 33, it's hit, ball pops out. Kelvin Knight, number five, jumps on it, but you're not gonna have this many chances where you've got a first and 10 inside Alabama territory to take a gamble on this play. Wants to throw it, zips it, incomplete. Tried to catch it on his shoulder pad rather than with his hands, and Willie Harris couldn't contain it. Well, I like the call because you had they went up on top to Willie Harris on a deep comeback route. Watson Brown a little frustrated because the ball was right on the money to Willie Harris, couldn't hold it. Now I think he come back with a running play, try to catch Alabama working up the field. Well, how about Wake Forest? Huge win. Oh, today. Bill Dooley, Gee, Bill has done what a great what, job. What a great way to uh, to close out a career. Good man. Good football coach. Over the wishbone set. Off we go with the action, and he'll have one. That's it. Curry, along with Will Brown, on the stop of the Crimson Tide. They just make you work for everything. You're not going to get anything easy against this defensive football team. They're going to make you work because they run and they really have a good scheme under Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator. About to go under 11 minutes until halftime. Alabama 17, Mississippi State nothing. Well, looking long, Truett needs to turn around and it's incomplete. In fact, I think he wanted Truett first, Mike, and then had to go to secondary receiver Willie Harris because Truett was open early. Well, I'll tell you, he, he threw it at the right time because John Copeland was really putting pressure on him, number 94. Greg Plump rolls to the right. See, he Landon is open, Truitt but he wouldn't the turn corner. around. Person who's really open is Willie Harris coming inside, number 87. He just couldn't get him the football. Too much pressure on him. Todd Jordan to punt. They have their punt safe team into now, Ron. They're not sure whether Mississippi State's going to punt it or not. Spiral at all. Palmer with the fair catch at the 11 yard line. 27 yards in the punt, and let's take a break. So far, it's been all Alabama. John James, the senior left tackle out of Atlanta. We mentioned he did some talking about the Alabama defense earlier this week. And as you see, a good defensive play on Lynch. And that's Jimmy Miles who steps up to make the hit. Anyway, it, it has not worked to his prophecy so far. Speaking well, you, of James. You like to have your players confident, 
but you don't like bulletin board material. You don't want to give them anything extra, but this bunch of Alabama, they don't need a whole lot extra. But you like confidence. Board. Yeah, you, like, you, you like confidence in your player. But boy, I never like to see that up on a other team's bulletin board. Trip over his quarterback's feet. Barker made the handoff, and you could see Lashley just got tangled up with him and stopped short of the ten. And let's go down to Adrian Carson. Oh, Ron, that tough talk from John James. What he actually said was this week. The last two, uh, two number two teams, the teams that were ranked number two coming in here, didn't leave number two. Now, he's talking about Auburn in 1990 and also claims that Texas was ranked number two last year by the Sporting News. Comes from a guy, you know, he's never given up a sack in 39 games. He's still hanging in there now, but pretty tough talk from John James. Third down, and Alabama needs the 21 and a half yard line. Got a man open and under throws him. Prince Wembley is who he wanted at the 24. Good series by Mississippi State on defense. Now they have a special team. They have a punt returner also that can make some things happen. There he is right there. Tony James, a senior from Clinton, Mississippi. 5'9", 186 pounds, a senior. games after losing some games early in the season. Saw him against San Diego State. They rebounded and starting to play good football. Always well-coached football team. Option play. You see how quickly it closes down. He pitched at exactly the right moment, and as a result, it'll be just about a six-yard game. Johnson came up and hit Roberts. Great pump with the option. Down the line. There's the fake to the fullback. He becomes a blocker. Teague, the safety, George Teague, 13, takes the quarterback, gets back to Kenny Roberts, picked up nice yardage. You see Gene Stallings yelling encouragement to his defensive football team. He never changes that expression too much, does he? Doesn't look like he's having a lot of fun. <laughs> he should be with this team. From the wish line, they run a counter. Roberts, and he'll be down to the 20-yard line. Johnson and Shea defensively. That's the best looking play that Mississippi State has run tonight. A counter play, but watch the blocking of the offensive line. They're able to block Eric Curry up the field, take advantage of his inside rush. But you notice how they're standing with their blocks. Kenny Roberts with nice yardage. On well, the rushing defense, 55 yards a game. And tonight, 71 yards is what the Tide has given up. will hammer it down to the 17. Derek Odin, a senior from Tuscaloosa, one of the inside backers, stops it. You see Greg Plump as the quarterback. Also, Rodney Hudson's been in the ball game. But they lost Sleepy Robinson in the Florida game. That's really a tough loss for this Mississippi State offense. Sleepy Robinson was the veteran quarterback that Jackie Sherrill felt like could take his team to the SEC championship. That loss hurt them on offense. The guard has picked up the ball, and he's going to be hit right there and knocked down. Bill Sarton. And now here comes a flag down. Sarton just picked up the ball, started to run, and Tommy Johnson came up and said, nope. Illegal procedure. Offense. The snap was not completed. The snap was not completed. That's becoming the national play. <laughs> Every week we see this play. This is one time that uh, that they weren't able to have success with it. Watson's complaining, but the center snaps the football and lays the ball on the ground. Pump moves out. Guard picks the ball up. 
you see how quickly Johnson came in? Tommy Johnson read that. that there, here's the snap. You see how he does it. He holds the ball. That, that was good. But I think what happened is he went down and uh, hit the ground. The ball was out. Should have been a good play. They said the snap was not completed. You could see it came up and hit his hands. Lemansky Hall, number 11, cuts his feet out from under him and plump. Now we'll look at a third down and still 10 yards for the first down. 17 to nothing. Bam on top, 650 left until halftime. Ron, two gimmick plays by Mississippi State. They haven't been able to connect. They still have to take their shots because against a great defense, you need some of those plays to hit for you. And again, it's Tommy Johnson. When they get you in a situation where you have to throw the football, they do the best job of bringing in the extra DBs. Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator with the extra defensive back substitution. Tommy Johnson just makes a picture-perfect tackle on Kenny Roberts, not to align close to the first down. Gardner to attempt a 37-yard field goal. And this time he's good. So Mississippi State is on the scoreboard. It is 17 to 3. Now it's a good look at David Palmer, only a sophomore out of Birmingham. As he is back to receive the kick, and uh, so far, Mississippi State has tried to keep the ball away from him. Well, he shouldn't get the ball in this kickoff if Mississippi State's. On target. Gardner booms it, and this will be nine yards deep, so not to worry here. Kick on the Broncos, 8 o'clock Eastern Time. Parker will be sacked at the 16 yard line. Kevin Henry and Mark Woodard, who has been everywhere, and you can see Jay Barker still down at the bottom of the stack. Mississippi State has settled down on defense. They're used, now getting used to the formations that Alabama's showing them. Alabama's giving them a little bit more one-back formation than they've shown all year. And Mississippi State now is settling in on defense. Sherman Williams comes in at tailback, number 20. Alabama thinks he's going to be the next really good one there. Rolls has the pass and throws it complete. Prince Wembley at the 29. Kevin Lee, I beg your pardon, 37 rather than 32. Ways to win for Alabama. Nation's number one defense, 175 yards a game. They give up turnover ratio, plus 14. And they're second in rushing offense. If you can run the football, Ron, Stop the run on defense, pause turnover, take advantage of them. You are going to be in the top five in the nation in football. Full house backfield this time. And Anderson with the first down as he takes it to the 32. Mark Water defensively. Mark has had an outstanding night, the senior from Kosciuszko. playing defense against Alabama you had to constantly know where number two's at when you see him run off to the sideline and replace you have to be happy you always know where he's at on the field he is at the top of the screen fumble on the snap and Barker will make his own recovery he was split out with the uh, 32 Prince Wembley that time they fumbled the snap and as you watch Toby Shields Number 61, maybe the quickest center in the country, snapping the football and then off on a block as fast as any center I've seen, is, just like the Nebraska centers. They're so quick on the snap. Toby Shields really gets off the football after the snap of the football. He's a junior from Fairhope, Alabama. Darkest pass is from well under from Palmer, who he wanted. Now it's going to be third down for Alabama. 
Third, three minutes and 30 seconds until halftime. Alabama, 17 to three. Now Moore, the offensive coordinator, coach with Bear Bryant, Larry Kirksey to the right of him, the running back coach. Crowd's gonna let you know on this one. Third down and they need the 42. Play took too long to develop, Ron. They were trying to go deep on an out and up to David Palmer. The play just took too long to develop. Good pressure by Keevan Henry. Jay Barker on the drop. Pressure inside. Never really got a chance. Keevan Henry never gave him the opportunity to throw the football. Deal with the kick. Wobbly spiral. to the 44-yard line. 28 yards and a kick, five on the return. And let's take a timeout. Scott Field in Starkville, Mississippi, 17 to three. Ron Franklin, along with Mike Godfrey and Adrian Karsten, and two minutes and 50 seconds until intermission. Close to the 40-yard line as Michael Rogers steps up into the hole to make the play defensively. Ron, the last three times that Mississippi State has had the football, it's been on the Alabama 44, the Alabama 36, and the Alabama 40. And you talk about great defense, that's when you expect your defensive team to play, and they've held it to three points. Right ahead with Davis this time. And let's go back to our congratulations to uh, athletic director Wander Offord and to head coach Billy Brewer and his staff. That'll be a Donnie Brook between Ole Miss and Mississippi State this year. Straight ahead with the carry, and that's not going to be enough for the first down. They're going to say that the knee touched short of the 35-yard line. I think you have to go for this one because you're just looking at, as Mississippi State, you're in four-down territory against Alabama. You're not going to have that many opportunities. And Jackie Sherrill is going to go for the first down. Late call by Watson Brown, changing the play. Plenty of time on that play clock, as you can see. In fact, now the timeout, and they were just trying to get Alabama to jump offside. And the Tide, very disciplined, and did not. So the timeout to the Bulldogs. I think you still have to go for this, Ron. You just have so many, 59 seconds on the clock, and Jackie has to make something happen here. Well, join us tomorrow from Atlanta when Richard Petty takes his final ride in Winston Cup Racing at the Hooters 500. It's a five-way battle for the Cup title also, so there's plenty to tune in for tomorrow, 1 o'clock only, here on ESPN. What do you call here? I think you have to go to the option game. I think some way to try to get Greg Plump as the ball carrier on the option. In fourth and two, it looks like a long two, but... Uh, Somehow you have to spring Greg Plump number 10 on this play. And that's not easy to do. No, not against this defense. Under one minute, 59 seconds left until halftime. Alabama 17 to three. Coming up at halftime, the Delta Fawcett report. The Nebraska shocker, Michigan surprised, and then Penn State's Notre Dame classic in the snow. All of that and more coming up at halftime. is the man who stuffed it. Hey, you talk about field position and you talk about what you have to do and it just makes it so difficult. They decide to give the ball to the fullback. Number 37, Michael Davis. 
running high, and John Copeland just never gave him a chance. Watch the battle of the offensive line. Just John Copeland comes down inside hard and makes the stop on Michael Davis. Mike, it wouldn't have mattered if he had been a foot lower or two foot lower the way he was beating the block. He needed a bulldozer to get ahead of him on that one. Gonna go on top, and he's got Palmer there incomplete at the 40-yard line. That was Knight who came over and put the lumber on him. You talk about that you're ahead 17 to 3, 48 seconds to go on the half, and you talk about the confidence that you have in your defense. They just don't feel that they can be scored upon, so they open it up, try to get the ball to David Palmer, and go down and get some more points. Uh, just a lot of confidence Gene Stallings has in his defensive football team. You can see the defense in the huddle on the far side discussing what the next plan of attack is. Sherman Wade. Turns the corner, look out. He will have the first down. And look for Alabama to call a quick timeout here as they have two left to stop the clock at 39 seconds, and they do. Barker will go to the sideline. We talked about Sherman Williams when he first came in the ballgame. The coaches think that uh, he is not only going to be good, that he could be the next great one for the Crimson Tide. I talked about early the word unselfish in this football team. When you play three tailbacks, Derek Lassie, Chris Anderson, and Sherman Williams, Larry Kirksey, the running back coach, told me, he says they just each pick each other up. They're always complimentary, and just everybody's pulling for each other. And to have a great football team, you have to be unselfish. Now this is what they're playing for as you look at the standings in the SEC West. Alabama at 6 and 0, 9 and 0 overall. The Mississippi State, they would have to win here tonight and then hope for an Auburn upset win over Alabama in the final game to uh, to get a shot at that SEC championship game on December the 5th. And Ron, when you look at Mississippi State, what Jackie Sherrill has accomplished has been outstanding because 7 and 2 and you lose your starting quarterback, Sleepy Robinson. The offense was designed for Sleepy Robinson, and you lose him in the Florida game. And he's just been able to put good defense and good offensive play just to keep winning football games. Situation, 39 seconds left until a half time. Alabama from their own 48. Dumps it off and gets it complete to Johnson, or Houston, I beg your pardon, Martin Houston. And he takes it to the 50-yard line. It's Daniel Boyd defensively. Good pressure by Mississippi State. Jerome Brown, yeah, he was number 98. Jerome Brown, boy, lost a lot of time here, Alabama, trying to decide whether they wanted to use their timeout. And they'll take the timeout with 18 ticks left on the clock. Delta Fawcett report at halftime, and some of the things that they will be talking about. Mike, uh, you know, we've had some upsets this year, but Iowa State winning over Nebraska, uh, I think, has got to be the shocker of the year. Can you think of another one that's even close? Well, you have to give me some time. Uh, my memory's not as good now, and, uh, but uh, I'll <laughs> think about that. But Jim Walden and uh, job to beat this Nebraska team, Iowa State, we, we had them against Kansas State. They lost a tough Thursday night game, but they had extra time to prepare for Nebraska. So it That's helped right, them. because we had them the Thursday night before. It helped them. They were able to come back off that loss and win a big football game in the Big 8. And to keep the Big 8 race alive, that brings Colorado back into the picture. Still have that tie. They've got a loss in the tie, so they're a half game behind Nebraska. Here comes the play, and if they don't go downfield, maybe a reverse to Palmer? I think you try to throw it downfield, deep downfield. Looking for him over the middle. Going to go up on top, though. It is tipped and caught at the four-yard line by Lee. First and goal, Alabama. Seven seconds until halftime. Going to try to line up and then kill the ball. Sure, he's just going to throw the ball into the ground, try to stop the clock, or maybe try to throw a fade pass into the corner. One or the other. Edward Williams tipped the ball. Umpire standing over the ball will not allow him to snap it. Now he can snap it. Clock starts and he downs it. Five seconds left until halftime. Kevin Lee up for the football. Good defensive pressure. Kevin Lee just plays the second bounce. Edward Williams, number 20, comes in on the play. And uh, 
Good reception. So Proctor comes on to attempt the field goal. This one 22 yards. And he knocks it home. We are at halftime. And as they head to the locker room, the Alabama Crimson Tide taking advantage of a 46-yard pass completion. It is Alabama 20, Mississippi State 3. The Delta Fawcett Report is next, right now, this time out. Halftime at Stark from Mississippi, Alabama 20 and Mississippi State 3. And Mike Gottfried, sometimes things don't come out as advertised that we talk about in pregames, but boy, the defense of Alabama. What in the world does Mississippi State do? Well, you're right, Ron. An awesome defense, but Watson Brown, the offensive coordinator of Mississippi State, just has to try to keep him off balance and do the unexpected. You're going to see a highlight here in a fourth and one play where John Copeland just comes down inside and makes the stop, just does not allow Michael Davis to get up the field for the first down. And when you look at the statistics, it's very easy to see why Alabama's dominating the football game. Mississippi State, the average field position on Alabama's 45-yard line and only scored three points. 0 for 6 on third downs and only 32 yards passing. They have to have better mix than that, Ron, in the second half. Well, that's the only way to put it. It has been awesome, the display by the Alabama Crimson Tide on defense, and their offense has gotten the job done when needed tonight as well. If you look at Palmer. Not the only way to slow him down as he goes out of the back of the end zone. And let's go down to Adrian Karsten for an update. Adrian. Well, Ron, just talked to Jackie Sherrill as his team really took the field. And he, say, he told his team at halftime, look, we can stop Alabama's streak right here. Ten of these 20 points on the board just comes from being out of position. Didn't block properly on the punt. But look, we should only be down by about seven points here. Any adjustments? I asked him. He said, look, all we got to do is just hit him harder and we're hitting them now. Well, we'll see if that is as easy said as done. on the carry to open the second half. Alabama offensive line does a nice job of position blocking. They'll be, they get into the defensive lineman and just turn them. And then they count on their tailbacks, Derek Lassie, Chris Anderson, and Sherman Williams to find the little crease and pick up good yardage. Pitch to Lashik again, tries to turn the corner. He does, but not enough for the first down. Frankie Luster, you can see number four, junior from Fort Myers, Florida. He's very good against the run as the man who chased him down. George Wilson, number 68, just watch him come out and just wheel around and make the block. Just steps out, now just turns the defender up the field to allow Derek Lassik to get yardage to the first down, to make it third down and two. Mississippi State, that's Charlie Davidson, and he is inside the 10 yard line. Good disguise by Mississippi State, the secondary. Charlie Davidson looked like he was playing off. Jay Barker was going to throw the quick pass to the outside. Charlie Davidson rolled up into two deep coverage, stepped in front of Kevin Lee for the interception. Now this is a great opportunity for the Mississippi State offense. Remember, he had the fumble recovery and the only touchdown against Arkansas last week. Option play. Here comes the pitch and hit in the backfield. Team played it absolutely perfectly. Great news is, Ron, that you got the ball on the opponent's 11-yard line. The bad news is it's like having it 50 yards away with his defense. <laughs> but it's a good way to start a half if you're a Mississippi State team but is down by 17 points, 20 to 3. I think that's the key part of the game because they can't settle for a field goal here. They've got to knock this one in for seven. Wants to throw it. Zings it. Tip. Through it. Touchdown. 
Alanda Truitt caught the tip football and scored. That is a touchdown that's larger than large as far as Bama's concerned. He is a man that they wanted desperately out of high school. And Mike, as they go for two points, they tried to get him again when he transferred from Pitt. Two shots at him, and he decided to go to Mississippi State on the second try. Going to throw back with the pass, and has it complete for the two points. Clacker. What an effort by the Mississippi State offensive football team to put eight points on the board. Great pump to Orlando Truett. The ball is tipped. Good defensive play by the secondary. Look at him outstretched. Bring the ball in with one hand. What a great reception by Orlando Truett. Mike, how could you possibly fuss at your defensive back? You couldn't cover him any better than that without having defensive pass interference. Could Look you? at that catch, Ron. I'll tell you, that's amazing how he was able to pick that with his one hand, the palm of his hand, and bring it in for the touchdown. Alabama wanted him, as we said, that they lost him to Pitt. Then when he wanted to transfer, Alabama went after him again and missed him a second time. Ronnie's from Birmingham, Alabama, played for Cecil Leonard in high school there. And Orlando Truett uh, brought up, he was up there recruiting uh, when we brought him up there during the Super Bowl. And uh, he decided to come to Pittsburgh. It was a pleasure being around him. He's the best receiver I've ever had. And now he's playing for Mississippi State, and he's made two great catches out here tonight. And you could see the players consoling Johnson on the sideline. And as I said, I really don't think he has anything to be ashamed of. No, you're right. And I'll tell you, Ron, electricity is in the air here. Mississippi State fans feel like they can come back in this ball game and go after the number two ranked team in the country. Adrian Karsten, what do you have for us? All right, the pressure's really on the Bulldog defense, Ron. Now, they just sent him back in. Here's the game plan. They're going to try and keep him between the hedges. Tackle to tackle. Keep your eye on Water. He's really going to pinch him down. Lassie tries to go outside. There's Woodard. There's Lassie out of bounds. Woodard knocked him into the hedges. He's right. They are going to keep him inside the hedges. Derek Lassie, good job. By Mississippi State of stringing this ball out, Ron, to make sure there was no place to cut it up. See Mark Woodard, number 45, play off the block of Steve Buskey, number 83, just would not allow Derek Lassick the corner. Defense is the champ as you look at Mark Woodard, the senior from Kosciuszko, Mississippi. Stephen Henry this time. And these fans are really going wild. Gene Stallings, I know the feeling over there, you just can't get to the point where you pull in the horns on offense either. Two running plays here. Keevan Henry, number 91, makes the play. Danny Boyd, 41 on top. Good aggressive pursuit for the Mississippi State defense. Huge down right here. Third down. The line to make the 30. Throws it, under throws it. A one-hopper to Palmer. And it looked like on that throw that the interception shook up Mr. Barker. Brian Deal, the sophomore from Oakland, Alabama, standing back to punt at the seven. Returnable kick by James. Return to the near sideline. One person broke the wave, and he will be stopped after a couple of yards, and that is an outstanding job defensively. We'll take a break. 32 yards on the punt. Well, you look at Mark Woodard on the sideline talking with the defensive staff and also some of his teammates. Well, the end of the game right now, he probably would be the most outstanding player. Rolls it, has a man wide open, throws it complete to Clanton, and he is inside the 30 to the 25-yard line. That's a 22-yard play. Misdirection to hold the speed of Alabama. Great pump for the fake to the left. 
That holds the linebackers. Gives a chance for Kurt Plant, number 88, to clear. Come open. Derek Golden, number 56, behind on the coverage. Johnson's the one who took the brunt of that one as Odin hit him from behind and knocked him into Johnson. Play action. Incomplete. And now the officials run toward it. Was that a lateral? I don't bite? think there's any doubt it was a lateral. Okay. Because it was recovered very wisely by Kenny Roberts. And it was Eric Curry who was was putting on the pressure. And so that's going to be a big loss of yardage. He'll take it back to the 34. Ron, sometimes when you have a receiver playing like Orlando Truitt's playing tonight, he's made two great catches. You just try to get the football to him because he's making spectacular plays. He's having a night. And roll the pocket. This time it's caught by Harris. Ron, you can't throw the football any better than Greg Pump throws this pass to Willie Harris. Antonio Langham, number 43, who may be the best cover guy in the SEC. Pretty good shape coming around, but just good velocity on that football. Offside against Alabama decline. Mike, it's almost like that ball jumped at him out of the lights. You see his hands were out front, and all of a sudden he caught it almost behind his head. He did. He made a great catch on it. And Ron, the intensity level of the crowd and the intensity level of Mississippi State has really picked up. On the other side of the ball, it doesn't look to me like Alabama is as fired up as they were early in the football game. 20 to 11, Alabama leads. We are about to go under 11 minutes left in the ball game. Option play, and the pitch comes to McCarry, and he will have the Mississippi State first down as they will spot it at the 13. Tommy Johnson tripped him up. Randy Brown, number 32. You're going to see a great block on the wishbone from number 32 as he chops the defender and allows Fred McCray to pick up some good yards. First and 10, Mississippi State. Going to counter with a quarterback keeper. He's at the five. He is at the one. First and goal, Bulldogs. against Watson Brown. Watson Brown is on a roll right now as the offensive coordinator. You can see his eyes. He's into this football game. He's making these calls. He made his adjustments at halftime. He's on a roll right now. He has a feel for the Alabama defense. This is the first time they've been challenged all year on defense. Back-to-back -back drives by Mississippi State. First and goal this time. Hit it to one. No arms are up, and he is stopped. Tommy Johnson made the defensive play. Wow, he looked like he had in the knee in the end zone. Second down here. You might think quarterback sneak. I'm so impressed again with John Copeland and Eric Curry and James Gregory getting up the field. I'm not sure I'd take the ball off the line of scrimmage on the second down play. I think I tried one time to let my quarterback get it in because in four downs, you're going to have two other shots. Quarterback sneak, touchdown, Bulldogs. Mississippi State Bulldogs, 18. We'll be right back. Greg Pump from the sideline putting on his parkas. It's getting cooler. 
only in temperature as far as the weather, but not as far as Mississippi State. Gardner kicks it out of the back of the end zone. And Mike, talk about how big this series is for Alabama as we take a look at a graphic that really is telling about field position. Ron, Alabama's went flat on the sideline, and this is a big series for their offense because they completely lost momentum, and you can't continue to give Mississippi State the football on your side of the 50-yard line, and Gene Stallings knows that his offense has to gain some momentum back on this drive. They fake to reverse. This is Lassie. Cuts it back up into the middle, and he will have five now six yards that they will spot it. Arlie Gibson got a hand on him. Now here's the graphic I was talking about. Look at field position and the first three as far as the starting point for Mississippi State. But look at the last two. The Alabama 11 after the interception and the Alabama 47 following a defensive stop and a short punt. The key has been that Mississippi State's defense is not allowing Alabama to get the ball and move it and allowing good field position for their offense. Which comes to Lassie, and he slips down. His knee goes to the ground at the 23. And let's go to... Oh, we got a great one going here. 20 to 18. Alabama leading by two, but I'm not sure they're leading in momentum right now. Pass is caught. Kevin Lee makes the reception, and that silences the crowd right there. Charlie Davidson makes the defensive play. But, Mike, talk about the size as far as how big that catch is, because all of a sudden, now this crowd of 41,000 goes quiet, and before, they've been handling the momentum. That was a big play call by Mal Moore. He went to an unbalanced line to the left to allow Jay Barker to get on the corner and throw the ball to Kevin Lee on the out route. Charlie Davidson in coverage, but a good call by Mal Moore. Sherman Williams comes into the backfield of Fielder. Gets the carry. Big opening in the middle, a little stutter step, and he'll have it to the 38-yard line. Seven minutes and 33 seconds left in the third quarter, which seems to have just flown by. That man knows as well as anybody to lose momentum and to achieve it again is one of the most difficult things in any sport. Doesn't matter what it is. And that's what he's trying to get his ball club to do right now. It's tough when you get the other team on a roll and Mississippi State's on a roll. Here's the pitch. Williams turns the corner, will be hit, and he'll fight his way back to the line of scrimmage, but it's going to be third down. Go well, back to the first down, the pass to Kevin Lee by Jay Barker. If they don't make the first down here, at least you punt the ball down to Mississippi State's territory and you let your great defensive football team come on. And, and they can do some different things when you're playing defense on the other side of the 50. But this is another key third down for the Mississippi State defense. going to go on top, and he's got him wide open. Caught by Lee, and he drops the football. Oh, my goodness. Now Charlie Davidson, you believe one thing now, he's breathing again. <laughs> he wasn't breathing for five seconds because he bit the fake of Kevin Lee, and then Kevin Lee drops the pass. Look at Charlie Davidson. He says, wow, I'm saved here. Watch him clap his hands now. I'm saved on that drop. Deal to punt. And this is his best of the night. Hanging spiral at the 21-yard line. To the 40, and now to the 44. Tony game. 41 yards on the punt and 18 on the return. Let's take a timeout. Kevin Lee on the bench, number 37, put an asterisk by the drop pass of his, and we'll see how large that turns out in this football game. Quick looking pass, intercepted. No, and now this one's dropped. I beg your pardon. Teague had it, took a step, and then dropped it. Ron, to me, this is the football game right here because Mississippi State just has so much momentum. Greg Plump on the pass, trying to get the ball to Orlando Truitt. 
George Teague, 13, should have had the interception, but there's five seniors on this defensive football team. It's time for them now to make the challenge and stop the momentum. Running play. That's a good hit and second effort as Randy Brown got popped pretty good by Sam Shade out of the secondary and then picked up another yard. Here are some of the surprises in college football today, and could this be another one here in Starkville? Alabama leads it by two, but they, they own this thing in the first half. They led by 20 to three at halftime. And two quick scores by Mississippi State in the second half has drawn it to within two. And third down, the pressure has it complete. Roberts for the first down and knocked out of bounds at the 33. Teague defensively. Well, Chris Donnelly's in good shape. Bill Oliver with a great defensive call to put pressure. Put pressure on Mississippi State. Chris Donnelly, number 21. Here comes the pressure to face a great clump. There's the pass. There should have been the tackle, but Chris Donnelly missed the tackle. Kenny Roberts then picks up the first down. So the offside against Alabama is declined, and the new line of scrimmage is just outside the 33-yard line. This is Davis. Bounces off one tackle and will be stopped at the 29. Derek Oden comes up to make the hit. This most surprising thing to me in the second half is watching Greg Plump number 10. He's just playing with an air of confidence about him that he, he didn't have in the first half. He has arrived as a quarterback in this quarter. So much, you look at his eyes, he's just confident. He wants the football, wants to throw the football, run the option. He's in control of this ball game. Davis now 12 carries for 50 yards. They run the option. They force it back inside. It's going to be a third down at about five. Rodgers will wind up with the tackle. Lemansky Hall really forced it. And Adrian Carson, what do you have for us? Ron, the missed tackles, the missed interceptions, the drop passes. Gene Stallings is steaming over here. He says there is no excuse for lack of concentration. He told his defensive line, start playing like the number one team in the nation. No, get off the ball. I'm going to yank your blank out of there. Yank your blank. Uh, get him out of there. Mississippi State has to also be thinking here on third down. They're in field goal range. Over the middle, it is caught by the tight end, Clapp. Enough for the Bulldog first down. Kurt Clapp's made some big catches on the two-point play, and now to pick up the first down. You just look at Greg Plump. Wide open plan in front of the linebacker, Michael Rogers, number 52, and Greg Club. Everything's coming up roses for number 10. Players shaken up at the 19. You just joined us. Three minutes, 43 seconds left, third quarter. Alabama 20, Mississippi State 18. And the Bulldogs are driving the football. They have a first and 10 at the Tide 17. And let's go quickly back to Tim. Godfrey's hoping he'll get that team so he can do some of those names. <laughs> no, I'm not. Uh, Bob Wagner, the Hawaii coach, Tim Brando, is just quietly doing a great job at Hawaii, 7 and 1. Derek Oden, the senior from Tuscaloosa, is the man who's shaken up on the play. Been a starter for 28 games for the Crimson Tide, and he will go to the bench. And it looks as though he's maybe trying to shake the cobwebs out of his head. Here are the numbers on Plump tonight. 8 of 13, 111 yards, 5 of 6 in this half. He's on a roll. Brown the ball carry. Randy Brown takes it 
to just outside the 10. James Gregory with the stop. Well, their offensive line is gaining confidence, too, against the defensive line of Alabama. John James, number 76, with a big block on that play. 6'3", 294-pound senior. They're getting, they're getting to the defensive line of Alabama. Late substitution number 90, John Walters, comes onto the field to play for Alabama. has turned into a fifth fight for the offensive line of Mississippi State. As they come off the ball, you see the blocking. They're able to get into the body of the Alabama players. Number 13, George Teague misses the tackle. Michael Davis with good yard. Look at this third quarter. 107 yards, Alabama 21. Flag goes down corner and touchdown Randy Brown now let's check the marker which was thrown by the referee behind the offense probably motion illegal participation offense previous spot 15 yards one two three four five six seven eight nine twelve ten. people on the field they have 12 players somebody couldn't get off when you go to the wishbone Watson Brown wants a timeout he knows he has 12 players uh-oh, what a big mistake. But see, when you go to a lot of formations, that can happen to you. You wonder about the offense sometimes, but when you have a wide receiver and you have three backs in the backfield, sometimes it's not, uh, you, you're not able to get the word to the wide look, receiver. A big break for Alabama. Talk about huge. Look where the new line of scrimmage. Instead of the one and a half yard line, now the 16 and a half with first down. Well, they got to make sure now, long yardage. I mean, you still want to score a touchdown, but you don't want to throw away the field goal out. Don't get careless with the football. They run the reverse. Brown cuts it back into the middle, and he will be stuck at the 14 by Donnelly. Chris Donnelly, a junior out of Germantown, Tennessee, just outside of Memphis. And the Crimson Tide with an injured player, and that is James Gregory, who was down at the 19-yard line. You know, as Adrian Carson was talking about, a lot of missed tackles. I'm sure Gene Stallings, and especially up here beside us, Bill Oliver, the defensive coordinator, has to be concerned about the missed tackles for Alabama. Nothing makes you matter as a coach than 12 men on the field. It's the worst penalty you can have as a coach. Well, it was a great shot by our guys to get the reaction of, of, of Watson Brown and you you could see just what you were saying he knew that they had the 12th man on there they were trying to get him off and he knew exactly what was going to happen the illegal participation was going to cost him 15. Well it was because an extra receiver didn't get off the field they had the, the three backs in the backfield which makes it difficult sometimes to communicate uh, to the wide receivers whether they're in or not somebody didn't come out when they were supposed to. I would be thinking quarterback draw here. Some type of quarterback draw or screen against Alabama. James Gregory, as you can see, having to be helped off the field, it is his right knee that has been injured. And Albert Brown, number 76, has come in replacing him. and that's going to be it. You can see London along with Shade getting off the stack. Looks by the first two calls when you have a long yardage situation, it appears that Jackie Sparrow is playing for the field goal, trying to sneak something up inside on the run. Now either a safe pass where you roll Greg Clump to the sideline or a run to set up the field goal. Safe pass and a spin out throw or the run to the fullback. Throws the pass and it's well overthrown. Truett is the man that he wanted. Landa's having a good night, but I don't think he can reach that one. <laughs> but they're still in good shape for the field goal. Yeah. 
One minute, 34 seconds left in the third quarter. And the field goal attempt. And Chris Gardner is going to come from the 17-yard line. So it's a 27-yard attempt. Plenty of distance. And he's got it. The Bulldogs go on top, 21 to 20. Tonight's Toyota Leadership Award winners are from Alabama, center Toby Shields. He carries a 3.06 in finance and visits local community children about the Say No to Drugs program. And from Mississippi State, Senator Lee Ford, a 2.8 student in teacher education. Lee visits local elementary schools to speak to kids about the importance of education. Toyota proud to donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund on behalf of these athletes. Ron, the pressure not only is on the offense of Alabama to get a drive and score some points, but also to get a rest for the Alabama defense because they've been on the field most of the third quarter. And Mike, with, with the injury, we'll try to get a report from, but James Gregory has been a mainstay. That's Mike DuBose, defensive line coach, going over the adjustment for the defensive line. Kick is out of the back of the end zone, as Gardner has really been a weapon tonight. No returns because of his foot. to 20. If you had uh, gone out for a bit and come back in, the 21 belongs to Mississippi State. The 20 to the number two ranked Alabama Crimson Tide. Pitch goes to Palmer and they run the reverse. This is Kevin Lee. Blocker in front and look who's outside. Mark Woodard has been unbelievable tonight. Boy, he studied some film, didn't he? Well, he's shaking his head, said, don't bring that reverse my way. It looked like it had the development of a pretty good play for Alabama, but Mark Wooder just wouldn't make, allow them to block him. See number 45, he's sitting there waiting for the reverse now. Now he has to take on the block by the quarterback, Jay Barker. Now just come up and make the tackle on Kevin Lee. He's had a career night here. To he really has. Looking long, and he's going for Lee. Got him wide open, and the pass is underthrown. There was pressure against the quarterback, and Jay would certainly like to have that opportunity again. I believe it was Carroll. He had two men who were breaking open, but Lee was by himself. Just couldn't get the football to him. You, you know who's been silent tonight catching the football is David Palmer, number two. They have not been able to get the football to him via the air. You have to get the ball to that man right there. He's you know, capable on one play of putting you ahead. Alabama has gone on top with the pass as much tonight as they have the entire season. This is something they really haven't Maybe done. a sign of impatience right now, being behind. Uh, but you still have to find a way to get the ball to number two. They roll the pocket pass, is thrown. Yes, they say it's a catch at the 32 to lead. Boy, Jackie's doing a little appreciating down there. He does not think that football was caught. Will you take a look at it with the replay here from the end zone? Jay Barker on the row, a little wobble on his pass, and I'll tell you, Ron, that's close. Let's I wonder if we can see that again. Maybe come back to that and see if we can get another look at that pass. Could be the final play of this third quarter. Takes it to Anderson. Drills the pass and intercepted by Mississippi State's Charlie Davidson. It's academic now, whether it was caught or not, because Charlie Davidson, number 24, just picked off Jay Barker.
Here's the coverage. David Palmer walking, working up inside. You see the double coverage on David Palmer. I don't know where that ball's being thrown between Kevin Lee and David Palmer, but Kevin Lee was wide open. I'll tell you, I don't envy the officials tonight. Boy, there have been some really close plays. That was close to being on the ground, but he caught it. Randy Brown on the carry. And that is the end of the third quarter. So, we head for the final 15. Mississippi State 21, Bama 20. to 20 following the Davidson interception but let me show you something he didn't intercept it he trapped it it will be tipped by Carroll right there at the line of scrimmage and watch it right there that's on the ground but he was given the intercept so it is Mississippi State football at the 43 yard line Ron you know what's lost in all this so far with the score 21 to 20 Jackie Sherrill's decision to go for the two point play back when he scored his first touchdown in the pass to Kurt Clanton. Oh, illegal procedure, offense. Decision that allows them the 21-20 lead at this point. Let's go to Adrian Karsten uh, for an update on an injury. Bad news in the fourth quarter for the Crimson Tide. Nose tackle James Gregory is out, done for the game with a strain of the medial collateral ligament in his right knee. They just took a lot of time because he's such a big man to determine if he had to stay out for the rest of the game. Boy, that's tough news. And you see Elbert Brown, number 76, who is a sophomore out of Montgomery, replacing him. Pressure from the backside, and he is going to be swamped at the 44, Eric Curry, the first man there. And let's go to Tim Brando. San Diego State, when they don't get it from Marshall Falk, they usually answer with David Lowry. Here he goes to Darnay Scott, 42 yards. In all, Lowry is 8 for 12 for 102 yards, one touchdown, one pick. And San Diego State back on top of Hawaii by three. Darnay Scott's an impressive receiver, Ron. We watched him earlier in the year. We're in the fourth quarter. Mississippi State leading number two Alabama by one. Shovel pass, and it is dropped. That's, that's not a fumble. Not everybody scrambles for it, but that's the safe thing about that uh, play. Well, the most dangerous plays coming from Mississippi State now with David Palmer back. Punt receiving. Every time he touches the football, he has a chance to put you ahead. There you look at Palmer. As Todd Jordan will kick it away, standing back at his own 30. is his best kick of the night. Fair catch is called for and is made at the 20-yard line by Palmer. Well, witness the building of a Major League franchise and find out which player your team loses in a Major League Baseball expansion draft presented by SCORE. The Colorado Rockies and the Florida Marlins will select from all 26 teams this Tuesday at 2 o'clock. The Rockies will choose first. Maybe somebody will pick Adrian. Well, you never know. It might be able to put him somewhere. Sherman Williams breaks off one tackle that is hit by one, two, and three defensive players. Frankie Luster, the first man. Also, Edward Williams, they call him the Deacon. Deacon Edward. Mississippi State's controlling the line of scrimmage. I really believe that Alabama, Jay Barker, has to find a way to get the football through the air to David Palmer. Curl routes, out routes, any type of routes. The, the ball needs to be in the hands of number two. Mike, just a moment ago, we saw 98 for Alabama go down. Now 98 for Mississippi State, who is Jerome Brown, senior out of Westbury, New York, is the injured player and who is down at the 19-yard line. He has been injured. He missed three games. He came back against Auburn. He had a shoulder injury. And, well, it's hard to tell here if they are working on the upper part of his body again, but but he is in pain. Adrian Carson, what do you have for us? Ron, you're absolutely right. He's about five yards away from uh, me right now. They're getting him up as we speak, but it was he came in really kind of out of control. He didn't break down to hit the ball carrier, and he really whacked him, really cracked him with that right shoulder and landed on it as well, it appeared. They're checking him out now. At least he's sitting up. 
That would be a big loss for the Bulldogs. Adrian, as you were talking, we were able to see a replay of that, and he did. It was like the sharp pain jolted him as he fell off balance on that shoulder. Well, he didn't hit all week in practice. They kept him away from contact because of his shoulder. 13.55 left to play. Mississippi State 21, number two Alabama 20. Alabama led this football game 20 to three. Look at the second hand. Well, you, you can look at that both ways. First of all, that Mississippi State has now arrived in, in getting after the defense of Alabama, but the poor performance of the Alabama offense is what's allowing the football to be in the hands in great field position for the Mississippi State offense. Jay Barker, the sophomore from Tuskville. Under center and a play action. He wants to put it on top. Does and has it complete at the 38-yard line. It's Curtis Brown on the receiving end of that one. Good strike by Jay Barker with a good fake. It starts off with a good fake. They're so solid in the running game. That fake to number 20, Sherman Williams, hold the linebackers. You see Danny Boyd go across your screen just long enough for Curtis Brown to get behind him for the reception. Wembley had beaten the coverage by five yards. And Jay just overthrew him. Gene Stallings upset. He knew that Prince Wembley was wide open. Just wanted Jay Barker to lay it out there for Prince Wembley to make the catch, but just overthrew him. Never gave him a chance to make the reception. 10 out of 20, 151 yards. Two interceptions have really hurt the Alabama football team. Has not lost as a starter and quarterback for the Crimson Tide. Over the middle, and again, he is just overthrown. Curtis Brown is who he wanted. Showing a little frustration, a little impatience at quarterback. Play action pass here. Tight end across the middle to try to draw the linebackers. He has the receivers. He's pretty good, pretty good coverage by Kelvin Knight, number five, and the frustrated reaction by Jay Barker. It's third down. Alabama needs the ball at the 49-yard line. Dumps off a short pass. Here's Wembley. And Prince Wembley will take it for the first down at the 45-yard line of Mississippi State. Put an asterisk beside this play because Prince Wembley, number 32, was across the field. But when he watched Jay Barker move to the left, he moved with him. And you have to do that as a receiver. When the quarterback scrambles, you have to scramble with him. Prince Wembley was far the top of your screen. That's Prince Wembley. Now watch him motor right with Jay Barker to get open. He never gave up on the route. Across the middle, and he has Steve Buskey, his tight end. Steve's a senior out of Suitland, Maryland. A very good blocker. They just don't throw to him very much. They're throwing now. They're, 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 in, a, they're in a play action uh, mode right now. That is probably why now they might be able to sneak the tailback through on a run because, yeah, Mississippi State really play action conscious. So keep your eye on Sherman Williams, number 20. They roll the pocket, pressure all over. Tries to throw it. It's on the ground. Tipped and recovered by Mississippi State. Let's see if the play is dead or if it's to recover it. Long got on it. But they're going to say dead at the 46-yard line. Ron, two points here. I think it was a late call by the referee. Number two, it looks to me like he stripped the football. He, he was trying to throw the football, but I think it was stripped before he threw the ball. Obviously, that man may agree. Jay Barker, number seven, rolls out. There's the pressure. He never threw that football. That ball was stripped all the way by Daniel Boy, 41, and that was a fumble that they got away with. That was Daniel Boyd who hit him and knocked the football away. Third down. Play action. Barker, who 
will be hit and knocked down back at the 44. That's Keaton Henry. You can't keep going to the well on the same plays, the same play action passes. That's a loss of 15 yards on the play. Got to get some mix in the offense. Keevan Henry, number 91, with a sack on Jay Barker. Credit the Mississippi State defense. Deal with the punt. This is James backtracking. He'll take it from the 16. It's by one. The ball is loose. Picked up by Mississippi State. And he will take it. And now fumbled. He and fumbled. Alabama has recovered at the 43. He fumbled the football, Ron. Well, this should talk about a bang bang play. Bevel is going to wind up with the football, but watch what happens. He fumbled it first. James. Tony. Yeah, Tony James catches it first. All right, he's going to be hit right here. The ball is stripped, but it bounces straight up and is picked up by Mississippi State. And then another fumble, and there's Bevel right there, who comes up with the ball. The second first. player couldn't put it away. Didn't have time enough to put it away. Alabama has to go back to run the football here. Pitch comes to Williams. Tries to turn the corner. Gets hemmed in over there by Arlie Gibson. So let's update things for you. It is Mississippi State 21 to 20. As we're about to go under 11 minutes left to play in the ball game. And significant to mention is the fact that Alabama led 20 to 3 at halftime. And it has been Mississippi State scoring 18 points here in the second half to go in front by one. Well, Ron, you talk with 11 minutes left to go. And there's a lot on the line for this Alabama and Mississippi State football team. Pitching into Williams. No place to run. Bounces off one tackle. And it will not get by Woodard. And also Edward Williams outside defensively. Good pursuit by the defense. Mississippi State's trying to say to Alabama, we can play defense also. Sherman Williams, number 20, just no place to run. Good pursuit. Mississippi State never gave up on the play. Edward Williams, number 20, finally makes the tackle. You just got to keep figuring eventually they're going to get the ball to David Palmer throwing the ball. Looking for Wembley. He's got it at the 16-yard line. First and 10, Crimson Tide. But for the Alabama fans, they may have never seen Jay Barker throw a better pass. Good fake. Puts air under the ball. Charlie Davidson underplays the football. Prince Wembley with the catch. Another look. Right on the money for the first down. Charlie Davidson with the cover, but the pass completion is good. And the tide right now is rolling. Williams caught for the ankles, and he'll fight it to the 13. Arlie Gibson again, the junior from West Point, which is just right up the road from Starkville here. There to make the defensive play. And we are at 9.30 left to play in this ball game. This has been a rapid one, Mike. We've only played two and a half hours right now. Ron Pete Jenkins' defensive line coach Mississippi State said he told his defensive line you got to play longer and harder because Alabama will go from snap the whistle on you. Well, he's right there. Williams inside the 10 down to the five-yard line. Jackie Sherrill wanted a holding call. He brought some pressure from the outside. Alabama was able to pick it up. He thought it was holding. Number four coming off the corner, Frankie Luster. Picked up by the back. Sherwin Williams is able to get to the corner and down to about the four, three yard line. It's a great college football game. First and goal, and Mike is four and a half yards away. And now Jay Barker says, I want to time out. I'm not sure about everything here. And he will take it to the sideline. So we'll take a break with him. 21 to 20, the Bulldogs. Go back to Starkville. Mike, does that eerie looking moon have anything to do with what's going on in college football today? Well, it, it does. And I think it's eerie looking at Gene Stallings right now. But watch the offensive line play here. 
between Alabama and Mississippi State defensive line. Pitch goes to Williams. Can he turn the corner? No. Hit in the backfield. Daniel Boyd will drop him back at the nine-yard line. A loss of five. Ran the linebacker through on the toss sweep. Daniel Boyd, 41, with maybe the biggest play on defense tonight by Daniel Boyd. Number 41 just finds a seam. Number 35, Martin Houston, ran past Daniel Boyd. Didn't see him. He came underneath him to make the play. Palmer comes into the lineup, and he will come out split to the open side of the field. I just can't. I just keep figuring they're going to get it to him sooner or later. Parker back to throw, and that's who he's throwing for. In the end zone, just a little bit too far. Luster had the cover, but he had a step on it. It'll be third down, Crimson Tide. Well, you couldn't ask for anything better if you're Mal Moore. You want a one-on-one, -on -one and you got David Palmer against Frankie Luster, number four. Now, Frankie Luster's going to see him again one-on-one -on -one here on the next play. And let's go quickly to Adrian Carston. Ron, Mike just mentioned the offensive line play for Bama. Now, watch him. Their style is not a real sharp, crisp hit off the line. It's kind of a lean and steer into the man. Mississippi State's got to do a good job here on third down to stuff them. Use their hands quick. Get off the block. Looking for the fade route. Corner the end zone. Not close. Kevin Lee is who he wanted. Charlie Davidson had the cover. And here comes Proctor on. If you're worthy of a national championship, Alabama, your special team may have to be the factor that gets you to that opportunity to play for it. Proctor attempting from the 17. Ball is down and he splits it. So we'll take a break. 8-10 left in the ball game. Our new score, the Crimson Tide 23, the Bulldogs 21. This has been a tough ticket for a long time. And as you look at the scoring by quarters, Alabama dominated the first half. 20-3, to they led at halftime and then look at what the Bulldogs did. 18 unanswered in the third. And now Alabama has just come back and are on top by two. We're glad you're with us. Ron Franklin, Mike Gottfried, and Adrian Carson. Wish you could be here in person. This is just, as Mike said, a good old-fashioned get down to the trenches and fight type of football here. James, no place to go. And here comes a late flag. Mike, if this is against Mississippi State, and they have to take it inside the 10-yard line, that is an extreme mistake on a, a fielding of the kick and then the penalty because this defense all of a sudden can turn this game totally around. Well, it looks like it is going to be against uh, Mississippi State, so it will be backed up. Pushing it back. Receiving team. Half a distance. First down. Now, there, there's, there's the shove right there, right in the middle of the screen. And he couldn't help him. And the man is only at the 12-yard line when it happened. Now, the point is, I think you can look for Alabama to turn him loose and come after him right here. Well, that was Wesley Lisi, number 94, on the block. Alabama play a little bit different here on defense. You look now for your leaders, Eric Curry, to play John Copeland. We'll see what happens with Alabama on defense, if they change anything in this series. State wants to throw. Pressure is there. Gets it off. But it's complete to Roberts. And he will step out of bounds just across the 15. And let's go back to Tim Randall. Marshall Falk getting it done again, guys. Here he goes. 17 yards against the Rainbow Warriors. This one turning into a dandy. He has 13 rushes, 136 yards, and two touchdowns. Make note of that, Garrison Hurst and Gino Toretta. They're just warming up out there. 24-21. <laughs> well, they warmed up here a long time ago. The worst field position for Mississippi State to start off of the night. And a very gutsy play as they throw the pass complete. And they move the chains to the 15 and a half. And counter play. And this one will be stuffed behind the line of scrimmage. Number 11, Lemansky Hall will knock him down for a loss. 
you don't like to play with an open with a split end uh, one side against these guys you'd like to have a tight end on both sides but you have to spread them out Lemansky Hall was able to come off the short side where there wasn't a tight end to make that play good quickness from the outside now here's the situation that Mike talked about earlier in the ball game a second and long against the Crimson Tide defense and here they come with the blitz pressure is on well they're everywhere and the pass is intercepted by Teague at the 19 yard line well they're high-fiving here to the left of us in the coaches booth because a good defensive call you change up your strategy and you bring pressure on Greg Plump George Teague on me in coverage on a land of true at the race look at the pressure Greg Plump steps up doesn't get much on the football and George Teague reaches out that ball looked like that may have bounced but that was <laughs> close also the running play will go for one that's Chris Anderson and he might have been fortunate to hold on to the football you could hear the concussion as Kevin Henry came up a senior from Mount Bayou, Mississippi, and really put a headgear on it. George Teague's been all over the field tonight. Third on Alabama's list. Montgomery, Alabama. It's all-time interceptions, 13 for him. 23 to 21. Alabama on top. Again, they go with the running play. Anderson, just a little hole, squeezes through, has the first, and it is first and goal at the six-yard line. That's the benefit of playing several tailbacks. You keep them fresh. Sherman Williams has been the tailback in the last couple series. All of a sudden, Chris Anderson, number 33, has a high energy level, quick beat, burst through the line of scrimmage. The ball just inside the six-yard line. And now Jay Barker says, let's talk it over. Timeout is called by Alabama. So we'll take a break. 625 left in this one. The tied by a pair. And Stallings uh, paces on the far sideline for the second time in a row. His team has taken a possession in Mississippi State Territory. Kick the field goal on the last one to go back on top, 23-21. And now they look at a first and goal just inside the six-yard line. Derek Lassen, right side. Hit at the five, and he'll fight it to the three. Jimmy Miles is there to make the tackle. Derek Lassick's the bigger of the tailbacks. You like him down here. Run the football. They're going to bring Chris Anderson in now, number 33. 180-pound junior. Just keep alternating the backs, but they keep Derek Lassick in the ball game. That's Anderson. He will take it to the one-yard line, and now they're going to say inside the one. Mark Woodard again. They're accomplishing two things here as they move toward a touchdown. They're also moving that clock with 535 on the clock. You see uh, Derek Lassett giving a teammate to help him snap his headgear. This time with his gloves on, it's a little tough. Straight T. Anderson over the top. Touchdown, Crimson Tide. Chris Anderson with the run, following the block of Martin Houston and Derek Lassick, number 25. Number 45 with an excellent block on the play as Proctor tries to make it 30 points, Alabama. And he does. Here's another look at it as the Crimson Tide pushes that lead back out to nine points. 
off the line of scrimmage to give to Chris Anderson. He's able to go airborne. He's a good leaper. He was able to go airborne and get over the line. Gene Stallings, now more on the sideline. Larry Kirksey, feel a little bit better right yeah, now. There's some emotion yeah, from uh, Coach good. Stallings. Third largest crowd in Scott Field of history, 41,320. And reminding you that Alabama has never lost in this stadium in Southeastern Conference play. They are on the way to an 11 and 0 record here. 30 to 21 with 513 left in the ball game. Both these teams, Ron, it's too bad somebody has to lose this game because both these teams play with a lot of heart tonight. Mike, this could be their biggest scoring drive of the year. Five plays, 19 yards, 157, they took off the clock. And the man that, that uh, you have to applaud is George Teague, who moved to free safety tonight, and he made the pickoff. I applaud George Teague. I also applaud the defensive coaches, Bill Oliver, up here in the press box for the call to put pressure on Greg Plum. There's the kick, and again, they pooch it. They don't want to kick it to, uh, to James. The green puts it high in the air, and this is Galloway. And Galloway will take it to the 31-yard line. Now there's no doubt they have Mississippi State where it's going to be pass, pass, pass. George T, Antonio Langham, Sam Shade, Chris Donnelly in the secondary. complete. It's tight end Clanton, and he will be stopped at the 37. Michael Rogers, number 52, the linebacker, keeping the tight end. Kirk Clanton in front of him to keep the clock moving at 449 on the clock. Eric Curry with pressure. In fact, it looked as though he was about to grab Pump for the ankle as the pass was being delivered. What happens to the off? I'll give, give it to you in a second with Eric Curry. Drop play. Davis, you could see him run into his own man and knock him forward, and he'll take it just shy of the 40-yard line. Michael Rogers defensively. When you block Eric Curry, he moves out so wide that the offensive tackle wants to make sure, and he gets itchy to get outside on Eric Curry, and then Eric Curry will come underneath the tackle. Excellent pass rusher, number 80, Eric Curry. 6'7", 265 pounds. Antonio London who got the ball or tipped it away and Plunk was fortunate he did not get that one intercepted as he was being hit Greg Plunk's lucky this one didn't get picked off Antonio London number 55 gets a hand on it Chris Donnelly was also in good coverage on Kenny Roberts number 29 10 of 19 127 yards for him tonight Watson Brown, what will the fourth down call be? Needs a couple. Pressure, pass, is batted down at the line of scrimmage, and it's Albert Brown, who got a big hand up, replacing James Gregory, who knocked down the fourth down attempt. Great pump. Trying to pick up the first down. Just gets the ball deflected by Everett Brown, number 76, on the pass rush with his hands high to deflect the football. Greg Plump with an outstanding effort tonight. Now you see that defense again assembled on the sideline. This is, guys, in case you have to go back in the line. Martin Houston with a rare carry. And he will take it down inside the 35-yard line. Latif Travis, one of the first men to come over and make the hit. Also, Juan Wong. And now, Houston is shaken up. 
You know, Alabama has had more than their share of bumps and bruises in this one tonight. Uh, Gregory had to go to the sideline with the ligament damage in his knee. James Gregory, uh, he was gone. Martin off the field. They not only get a scare, they got a physical football game here tonight. Yeah, they really did. About to go under three minutes left in this one. Karen Lynch, he will be gang tackled and pushed back. Short of the first down. One long. First man to come up and make contact. Mississippi State needs to use their timeouts. They have three left. Now they're going to use one. Jackie Sherrill makes the call. So let's take a break. 2.55 left in the ball game. Looks as though the Tide will get victory number 10. 30 to 21, and this man right here, number 13, George Teague, has played a very large part in this Crimson Tide victory tonight. They keep it on the ground, and that will be enough for the Alabama first down just inside the 30-yard line. Ron, Alabama keeps their march toward the SEC crown. Uh, they have one regular season game remaining with arch rival Auburn. Pat Dye's Auburn team had a tough loss today to Georgia, but then the SEC playoff game that probably will be against Florida, that, as you say, the team that we watched give them their last loss, so that extra motivation for that game, because you can be vulnerable coming off your game with your big rivalry with the next week, but I think because if it is Florida, they'll be fired up, ready to go for that one. Anderson hit by Woodard and knocked down at the 27. Mike, I don't think that Alabama had rather play anybody in the Southeastern Conference than Florida because of the the walloping that they took and I mean they got embarrassed down there last year but Barker came on and started after that and then that's when things turned uh, and, and the, the string that they have going right now that's when it all began but nobody treated Alabama the way they got treated down at Gainesville and I think that these kids are focused on Gainesville Florida and they're anxious to see that happen well, don't elephants have long memories <laughs> Oh, my. Is that the age of quoting things again? Alabama 7-0. They'll go to 10-0. <laughs> Mississippi State will be 4-3. And, and this means that they clinch the West, and they are in that championship game on the 5th. Let's uh, take a quick look over at the East. Georgia 6-2, and 8-2 and Florida at 5-2. and two. But Florida clinches the title with a win against Dandy next week because of their win over Georgia earlier. If you're asking the question of why, because the identical record should the victory come. Two minutes and 14 seconds left to play in this one. A nine-point Alabama lead. It appears as though they're going to win, but boy... They got as big a scare as they had all year long. A legitimate scare. Anderson bounces in, back out, and then back in again to the 20-yard line. And both these coaching staffs watch this tape tomorrow morning. They're going to be proud of their football teams. Both these teams gave great effort tonight. In the first half, Alabama dominated. In the second half, Mississippi State, the third quarter, dominated that quarter. Then... Alabama came on and took the lead, and that's where we're at right now with 145 left with Mississippi State one time out on the board. In fact, if you'd gone to somebody at halftime and said, uh, I'll just make a wager pretty good money here, we're going to have a, a close ball game in the second half, you'd have taken it because you wouldn't have thought it. Not the way Alabama dominate, dominated the first 30, do you think? No, I'll tell you, Mississippi State uh, just really, I, I just keep talking about heart. You, you look at the heart in a ball club in Mississippi State under Jackie Sherrill tonight. And I think both coaching staff, I think this was a well-coached football game. A lot of uh, strategy moves by both these staffs tonight. It was an up-and-down night. If you're Mississippi State, you're sick in the pit of your stomach. If you're on the other side, you're just happy to get out of here. Well, Mike, here are tonight's Visa players of the game. From the University of Alabama, George Teague. One interception, one fumble recovery, but the interception, the last one, was the really big touchdown that put it out of reach for the Crimson Tide. And from Mississippi State, Mark Woodard. 
I mean, this guy, 10 tackles, three for a loss, and as far as hurries and just being in position all over the field, he had a truly outstanding game. In fact, it's his final whole game. And as part of the continuing effort to further the development of amateur athletics, Visa, proud to donate $1,000 to each of these universities and $1,000 to the U.S. Olympic team on behalf of these athletes. And our congratulations to both. Ron, you know Jackie Sherrill wanted this game tonight, being a graduate of Alabama and a uh, chance to play. I mean, he lost a tough one to him last year, 13-7. to Tough one tonight. Well, the longest running streak that Alabama's ever had was 28, and Mississippi State broke that back in 1980. Had a chance to repeat history, but it's not going to be true tonight as Palmer takes the pitch and is down at the 21-yard line. And Adrian Carson, what do you have for us? Well, Ron, you and Mike have hit it really on the head here. It's been such a roller coaster of emotions on the uh, Mississippi State side here tonight when your whole season really has pointed to this game tonight. All the effort and all the emotion that's gone into this game. You know, football all across the country is so big in your own town, but it's so much of a real uh, religion down here. And when you play Bama coming in, trying to knock them off, it's really kind of a down feeling here on the state side right now. Minute 17 seconds left as State will take over the ball. caught by Truett, and he will be pushed out of bounds out at the 34-yard line by Chris Donnelly. You look for a receiver sometimes when they got body where they can lean with their body. Alanda Truett can do that. He can bend his body to make the low catch. Excellent hands. Hands of a safe cracker. Throne, and that'll stop the clock with 107. Mike, you know, Mississippi State now will get an extra week. They have a week off, and then they play their arch rival, Ole Miss. What they really will have to be careful of, as we talked to so many people in Starkville yesterday, rather than talking about Ole Miss is the game that they point to, this game tonight is the one that the fans have pointed to all year. And the case in point, how quickly they can get rid of this one, because Ole Miss is a very good football team who, uh, Secured a, a Liberty Bowl berth today. And that ball is caught inside the 40. You got to right. maintain focus. You're right, Ron. You got two teams. You got Mississippi State has to go against Billy Brewer and uh, the fine Mississippi team. And you also got Alabama that has Auburn. And we did that game last year. And you know the feelings oh. between those two football teams. So it's a good thing they don't play next Saturday. They get some extra time to heal up their players and emotionally get ready to go because those two games will be exciting. Strong complete, Willie Harris, and he will go out of bounds. I'm going to mark him down at the 26-yard line. You're Miss Mississippi State fan, you still have hope. You're down 21-30, 51 seconds. If you could punch one in here, onside kick, one pass, field goal, you don't write anybody off in this day and age. going to be under thrown. It was Willie Harris who was the intended receiver. Probably you should also say to this man and his staff and his football team, in light of the uh, the jokes incident and the accusations about the, the monies that were exchanged, that they have maintained a focus that was probably hard to do because it's been all the talk in the newspapers, radio, and television in Alabama. Toughest job was on focus was for Gene Stallings because he's the person that has to answer it all the time. So every time somebody asks you the question, it takes away from your focus for your season. Pass is tipped and it's caught at the 11 yard line. Willie Harris makes the reception and that's twice tonight that Mississippi State has been benefactors of balls that have been tipped. Ron, you're, you're right. The good hands by both receivers, Willie Harris and Orlando Truth. They have to throw the ball to the end zone here with 39 seconds. You've got to get it in the end zone right now. Good move. Stop the clock. 37 seconds, but your throws now have to be with the ball on the 11-yard line for the end zone. Well, here's the situation. 37 seconds left. 
Mississippi State is down by nine. They have no timeouts left. That's the reason for a plump to go directly to the line of scrimmage, throw it down and stop the clock. Zone ball is tipped and George Teague comes up with the interception and that will do it with 28 ticks left on the clock. Trying to make something happen. Greg Pluck, ball tip, George Teague with the interception. Sam Shade with the tip and Teague makes the pickoff. Replay, good pressure. Great pump, pumps. Now throws, ball's deflected. Interception, George Teague. Reaction of the Mississippi State bench, Jackie Sherrill. Now, Ron, before this game ends, as you look at Watson Brown frustrated, Johnny Majors, of course, we all know the news of Tennessee. He went 16 years. He took Tennessee to 12 bowl games. Last three years in January, first bowls. Last six years, he won three SEC champions. I don't understand it. So now, the Alabama Crimson Tide in the championship game, the first ever SEC championship game as a two-division race. And who would it be, the Florida Gators or 